Welcome to the Daily Brief, where I'll go over the highlights in the market for Thursday, October 20th, and then go over the highlights for Friday, October 21st. And this will be the only video posted today. I looked over the charts, and there's not a lot of changes going on right now. We could make a case that the market could go higher from here, but those charts are showing some weakness with the last couple of down days. We could also make a case that the S&P could go down from here because things are still mostly negative overall, but we're kind of in between right now. And since we haven't seen a lot of action and there's no economic reports coming out on Friday, I decided just to go ahead with the daily brief video instead. Also keep in mind that Friday is options expiration. Now, technically they expire on Saturday, but the last trading day is on Friday. And that can really produce some wild swings and a real pickup in volume as <clears throat> options are matched up <clears throat> with different strike prices and so forth. So we'll have to just see how Friday plays out. Let's go back and talk about what happened on Thursday, though. Right at the open, we did have a higher open. It was looking pretty good right off the bat. We were able to get above R1 at 37.27, so that at least started off on a positive note. But then after we kind of fizzled to the upside, we retreated. We came down to the daily pivot at 36.97, which was just about again at the unchanged level, and we started to go negative after that. Prices fell down even below S1 at 36.65. And then going into the close, we came up just a little bit to close right at S1. We were down 0.8% on above average volume. And as I've stated, the technicals, you could make a case for either side right now. So in, when I see this kind of a situation, I just kind of step back. And we've been in this for a few days. It's like... Things could turn more, more positive if this happens or more negative if this happens. Well, you've got millions of people kind of watching the same thing right now, wondering which way are we going to go. Inflation and interest rates, that's really what drove things in Thursday's session. The 10-year just continues to go up. My goodness, just in the last few days, it's up over a quarter of a percent. So that, that's a big move in the 10-year and interest rates as a whole continue to go up. And that's what the market is really fixated on. Of course, we have all the geopolitical concerns, Russia, Ukraine, and so forth. UK, I have a bullet point there. Apparently, their prime minister is going to step down. Earnings are coming out. And we saw some real positive earnings. But then we saw some negative ones, too. Tesla got hit pretty hard. And then any Fed speak, and there's a little bit of that that I'll go through here. So what are some comments? Please remember Friday is options expiration. Technically, it's not. It's the last trading day. And rising interest rates, that's putting pressure on stocks right now with the 10-year note settling at 4.23%, where it was just under 4% just a few days ago. Then we had President Harker, who's the president of the Philadelphia Fed, who will be a voter in 2023, expects that the Fed funds rate will be well above 4% by the end of the year. Okay, we're coming into the last quarter here. That's what, two, two and a half months from now? Because inflation doesn't seem to be under control. Now, it's my understanding and my years of studying this that once the Fed raises rates, it can take a considerable amount of time, months, to work its way into the economy. And you don't see this happen really quick. You don't just raise the interest rates and then inflation stops. Because the economy is so big, so complicated, and so many variables are in it, these interest rates that have been raised, it's, it's going to take a little bit of time. So I, I don't quite understand that line of reasoning. Of course, this person knows a lot more than I do about economics. So, but the market grabbed onto that and used it as more of a negative statement. And let's see, earnings were better than expected on a general basis. We had AT&T, IBM, and Lamb Research. They came out and had good days, but then Tesla got hit pretty hard. 
Then in the UK, Liz Truss announced that she will resign as the UK Prime Minister. And she's only been in there a few weeks. About six weeks ago was when she took over. And she said that she will stay on until a leadership election is held next week. So at least she'll be there over the weekend. And we're going now to our every other day type of scenario with the UK. They seem to have something blow up there. And then we take a day off. And then the next day something happens. So we'll just keep an eye on that whole situation because that does have an influence on the U.S. markets. We still have a number of yield curves that are inverted, the 10 to the 5, the 10 to the 2, the 30 to the 5. The 10 to the two, excuse me, 10 to the three month is not inverted again yet. Anyway, it's close, but after going inverted for one day, it's now back in a non inverted stance. Sentiment is still fearful. It actually ticked up a little bit, but we're still in that fearful range. We had jobless claims that came out. There were 214,000. That was a lot less than expected at 233,000. This keeps giving rise to the idea that the Fed can justify raising rates because the employment situation is holding up. You have a lot fewer people who are claiming unemployment than what they thought there would be. The Philadelphia Fed index, it came down or came in at down minus 8.7. That's greater than the expected minus five. And then last time we got this, it was down minus 9.9. So they expected it to tick up a little bit. It came in worse than expected, but better than last time. Existing home sales were at 4.71 million, pretty much in line, a little bit higher than the 4.7 million that they expected. And the LEA, LEI, Leading Economic Index or Indicator, it came in at minus 0.4. They expected it to be at minus 0.3. That's a little weaker than expected. Now, economists really pay attention to this indicator, but a lot of these things are known beforehand, so there's really no surprises in this. So it doesn't really have an impact on the market, but we still pay attention to it because it can give us some insight as to the look of future economic conditions. Our trend is still negative. In fact, the ADX and the moving average are right on top of each other now. So it is weakening a little bit from where it had been, but we're still above 20. I've switched our bias to negative because we've had two down days in a row and you combine them together and it was down more than a percent, about a percent and a half. And I've kept our momentum at mixed because we could go either way from here. We, we could justify going higher or lower right now. Our different setups, our scenarios, they're weakening a little bit as we're going down, but they're still kind of hanging in there. And with one or two really solid updates, that whole situation could improve. And then this is not really relevant now because the Phillies didn't play. So what's our outlook then for Friday? The technicals, they could be improving. I have to go back to this non-committal stance here, but we need more follow through buying. Now, they could be getting weaker if we see more follow-through selling. So keep that in mind as well. We don't have any reports coming out economically on Friday. The whole list of geopolitical events, inflation and interest rates, that's still the real big fixation for the markets and then possibly any more Fed speak that we might get. So our scenarios, we kind of, it's really hard to determine one. So I'm kind of going with both right now. Because of all the headwinds, we could justify things going down from here, just a real negative environment. The technicals, they need to see more buying if things are going to improve. And with the up scenario, we also need to see some improvement there. Our scenarios, rotation setups, yeah, they're weakening a bit, but still trying to hang in there. We're still, we're kind of right in between the 20 period simple and exponential moving average. So that's kind of no man's land right now. And we can't really go with the sideways scenario because the ADX is above 20. Those of you that like it when it drops below the moving average, maybe you could go with more of a sideways type of trend right now. So our conclusion, the S&P could turn positive if buying continues. We could also flip that around and say it could turn negative or more negative if selling continues, 
In the short term, it could be turning positive. Intermediate term could possibly be improving. And long term, we are still negative overall. So thank you. I hope you have a wonderful Friday. I will prepare a full length video for the daily update over the weekend, as well as the weekly video and the intermarket analysis video.